So we are still working with piecewise functions. I've done two examples so far all the way through, evaluating, graphing by hand, and graphing on the calculator. I'm going to do a third example here, but I'm going to skip the first step where we evaluate some points in between. So basically in this example, we're going to jump straight forward to graphing it. We can see that we have three pieces in this piecewise function, and so let's just jump right into it. Let's start with the first piece, y equals 2x plus 3. This is a linear equation. It mimics the y equals mx plus b. So let me start by plotting my y-intercept of 3. And then my slope is 2 or 2 over 1. So I go up 2 over 1 as many times as I need to to fulfill the graph of this line here. So if I plot this here, so if I connect all the dots here, this gives me the graph of this line. Now, that's the graph of this line entirely, but I only want this line when x is less than 0. So my separator is 0, which is the same as my y-axis, and I want the less than part of it, so the region to the left. So that means I get to erase or get rid of everything on the right. Now, at 0, I notice I do not have an or equal to bar here. That means 0 is not included in this piece of the graph. So I need to get rid of my closed circle here and replace it with an open circle. So I've got rid of my closed circle, so instead I'm going to replace it with an open circle. That means that point is not actually on that graph here. All right, let's move on to my second piece. 3 minus x squared, or y equals 3 minus x squared. This is a degree 2 equation, so the graph of it will be a parabola. Um, since my x squared is negative, this parabola opens down. And since my constant term is 3, that actually means it's going to intercept 3 on this graph. Let me graph this one in green. So I do have the ordered pair of 3 on my graph, and then let me plot in some more points. So if I were to substitute positive or negative 1 in, that would give me positive 2 as an outcome. If I were to substitute positive or negative 2 in, that would be 3 minus 2 squared, which gives me 4. So my outcome would be positive and negative 1. So if I were to substitute 3 in, that would give me 3 minus 3 squared, or 3 minus 9. So my outcome would be negative 6. So that would give me this point here and this point here. I could substitute 4 in, but my point would be beyond the edge of the graph. So this gives me this parabola of 3 minus x squared. Now, I've graphed that graph entirely, but I only want this graph where it's defined to be between 0 and 3. 0 is the same as my x-axis. x equals 3 is defined here. So I want between these two green highlighted regions. So that means I need to get rid of everything else. So I've gotten rid of everything else, but notice what happens here. My two pieces actually connect, and that's pretty cool. That makes that function continuous all the way through at least those two pieces of the piecewise function. So I had an open circle where my blue is, but I have a closed circle where my green is. Now those two colors are pretty closely identified there, so it's hard to see what's really going on. So if I were to zoom in, I would have a closed circle of the green graph like this, and then I would have an open circle surrounding it and my blue graph like that. So we actually have those two points connecting, which makes it pretty neat. Okay, now let's move on to the third part of my graph, y equals one-third x minus eight. It is a linear or degree one equation. 
So I find my y-intercept of negative 8, which is here. And I count my slope up 1 over 3. And I do that as many times as I want to or need to. So that gives me this graph here. So if I connect the points of this, that gives me my third piece. Again, I've graphed it everywhere, but I really only want this graph when x is larger than 3. So I find where x is equal to 3 at, and I want the right-hand version of it. So I plot 3 and beyond, getting rid of everything else. But I have to figure out which of these at 3 is a closed endpoint. My red graph, or my third piece, did not have an or equal to, so that piece actually should not be a closed circle. It should be an open circle. And my green piece was or equal to at 3, so that means I do have a closed circle on that part there. So I can get rid of everything else. So here is the end result of my piecewise function. So the reason that I wanted to put this example on here is to show you that pieces can actually connect up. Pieces don't have to be identified as three actual separate pieces. And remember, this is what happened in our first applied example, which I gave you, our car. Notice our three pieces do actually meet up at those points here. So in most real-life settings, our pieces would actually connect up. But in piecewise functions, they could really do anything. Connect, like we see happen at 0, or not connect, which we see happening at 3. Okay, let us go ahead and double-check this using our graphing calculator. So my first piece that I substitute in is y equals 2x plus 3. Make sure to put it in parentheses, because I'm going to graph that over the region of when x is less than 0. My second piece was defined as 3 minus x squared. And I'm going to graph that over the region. Now, the way it was given to us here is this here. X is between 0 and 3, but remember the calculator will not interpret that correctly. We have to separate it out. So we have to keep X is less than or equal to 3, or 0 is less than or equal to X. That's the way you can interpret it. But most of the time we read it as X is greater than or equal to 0. It's like holding a mirror up to that piece. So these are the two separate intervals that I'm going to substitute into my calculator. So my first one was when x is greater than or equal to 0 over my second interval is when x is less than or equal to 3. So the first is the piece as it's defined, and then it's over each interval as it's defined that way. My third piece was one-third x minus 8, and it was defined over the interval when x is greater than 3. And so this graph here should give me the graph of what we have found by hand. So zoom 6 to give us our standard window. There's my first linear piece in blue, my second quadratic piece in green, and my third linear piece in red. So if I compare this up with what we have drawn here, we can see that our graphs are doing what we see here. Now, the only discrepancy is the graphing calculator doesn't clarify which is closed and which is an open circle. If you really want to see what's happening here, you can zoom in on this. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use my zoom, my zoom in feature, which is option two. 
Now it's going to put your cursor standard at the origin, but we want to zoom in around that point up there. So we're just going to move our cursor up to the point where we actually want to zoom in at. So again, the blue is my first piece, and the green is my second piece. So it looks like there's a little bit of leeway in between, where actually there is not. These two points meet up. And again, if I were to zoom in on this by hand, where we do actually define the open and the closed circles, it would mimic something that looks like this here, where the green is a closed circle and my quadratic graph on the right, and the blue is an open circle with my linear graph on the, on the left. So we see that these two piecewise functions actually connect up at that place there. And so this finishes up all my examples of piecewise functions.